I want to learn Rust by learning GUI programming. After some research, I settled on eGUI and eFrame. I use the Linux operating system, and the installation of Rust is relatively simple. I assume that you know how to install Rust on your machines, you know how to use Cargo, and you know the difference between Cargo and Rust C. I created a Cargo package in the directory. Named eGUI Basic. This is the cargo.toml file. Let's see what's inside the file. This is the package section. Since I will build different executables from different source files, I need to add a bin section for each file I want to build. Today, I am going to talk about this one. And this one. Let's jump to the bottom of the file. The dependencies section tells what packages our current project depends on. For today's examples, we only need eGUI and eFrame. Now we are closing the file. All the source code is kept in this folder. This is the one I am going to talk about. I have hidden all the other files. Let's open the file and have a look at the code. First, let's look at the main function. The main function is the entry point of the Rust programs. Fn is a keyword for defining a function. Let's compare our main function to the main function of the famous Hello World program, which has only one line of code printing, Hello, World. When you don't return anything in a function, you actually return an empty tuple. Let's get back to our program. Here, the main function returns a type called enum. We will learn what an enum is. Let's have a look at the eframe function run native. This is how we start a desktop app. For detailed information about this function, visit the official website. Run native takes three arguments. The first one is the name of the app. The second one controls the behavior of a native window. The third one creates the app. This is the name of our app. Please note the type of the argument variable. Eframe, native options is a struct controlling the behavior of a native window, such as the position and size of the window. For more information, visit the official website. This one is more difficult if you don't know Rust. At this point, we only need to know that my app is created here. This is the full code we have seen, and my app is defined here. So what is a struct? I will spend some time on struct, because it is important for the understanding of our code. In order to understand the Rust struct, let's first look at a Python class to find out how we combine different functions or properties into a template for objects. We want to define a two-dimensional point which combines a pair of numbers. We use the keyword class to define the class name. We use the keyword def to define a function. This function is called when we use class to define an object. We provide the x and y values for the point. We define another function, which is used to judge whether or not two given points are the same. The return value is true or false. Next, we define a point called p1. A point called p2. Obviously, p1 equals p2. A point called p3. We use the function is underscore same underscore as. Then we show the results. We run the program. This is what we expected. The key point I want to make is that the Python class provides a way to bind functions and data together. How do we achieve the same functionality in Rust? Let's see how Rust implements the point class. Rust does not have the keyword class to bind data or functions. Rust groups related data into a struct. We use 32-bit integers for x and y. Now we use the IMPL keyword to bind functions to the struct. This is the Rust version of is same as. It returns true or false depending on the value pairs we have. We need the main function in order to use the point struct. And the keyword let is used to define a variable. 
Now we call the function is same as to see if P1 is the same as P2. And if P1 is the same as P3. We print the results. The codes don't compile. Replace equals symbol with a colon. Back to the codes. Compile again. Failed again. For some reason, we have to put the ampersand symbol before self, like this. We compile and run the executable. With expected result. Now that we understand what a struct is and how to bind functions to a struct, let's get back to our EGUI codes. Here we define a struct called myApp and bind a function to this struct. This function is called new, which basically is a constructor. A lot of things are weird if you come from a background of coding with Python, C, or C++. We just ignore them right now. We will talk about them soon. Let's see this one, creation context. It's a struct containing a lot information. We are going to use this information soon. Bear in mind that the new function is called once before the first frame. We are going to focus our attention on this part of our codes. We need to know what the eframe app is. Eframe app is a trait. Then what is a trait in Rust? A Rust trait provides a way to share some related functions. Let's see an example. We have two structs here. Next, we define a trait, which contains two functions. There are no function bodies so far. Now we implement the trait for the circle struct and code the function bodies based on the formula for circle area. Do you notice we don't have a semicolon here? When a semicolon is missing for the last statement in a code block, the value of the expression is returned. This is the implementation of the shared behaviors trait for the square. Let's see the main function. Pause the video to see how the functions bind to the structs. Back to our EGUI code. We implement the eframe app trait and bind the function update to the struct my app. This function is called each time the screen needs repainting. When we do coding using EGUI, we code the update function. The function update takes three arguments, self, context, and eframe frame. Context contains information for updating the frame and is passed to the show method of the central panel. In this example, we don't directly use the frame and just ignore it for now. For the current purpose, we just take the central panel as the area to draw, paint, or place our widgets. We just use the default setting. The show method is the one we are going to learn. It is defined like this. It needs the context, and, add contents. This one is hard to understand if don't know anything about Rust. Let's remove these three lines. We move the closing brackets upward. This is the first argument, self. The second one, context. And the third one, add contents. What's this? It's an anonymous function called closure. For comparison, let's have a look at a regular function and a closure. The closure doesn't have a name. For our show method, the closure is passed as an argument. The body of a closure can be a single statement or multiple statements. If the closure consists of multiple statements, the body must be enclosed between curly brackets. UI is a region of the screen where you can place the widgets, like labels, buttons. We place a label first. The second one. The third one which is a shortcut for UI.label using rich text. Before we run the program, let's have a look at the code. Rust has adopted Python's explicit importing philosophy. The use declaration shortens the path required to refer to a module item. This is about derivable traits, which we will learn soon. Now it's time to run our program.
before we finish this video, let's have a look at this program. The only difference from the previous one is that we added a side panel. In this way, we can understand what the central panel is. Let's compile and run the program. This is the final result. That's all for today.